Visit AnsonPDR.com for the largest selection for just about all your PDR tools, where you'll find hog glue and hog tabs. Don't forget to grab your Magnatech mat, available at most PDR tool distributors. Hey everyone, and welcome to another episode of PDR Tool Time. This is episode 232. I'm Vince D'Alessandro, along with John Renstrom and Daniel Graham. Hudson wait, 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 I thought I was going. I thought it was my turn. Okay, go, quick. No, yeah. that's fine. No, that's good. Okay. Hudson will not be joining us tonight as he is trying to sell a house and buy a house all at the same time. So, and work on car lot cars. Yes. Oh, yeah, he got a call. He's got 19 cars to do. It is 732 in Texas right now. He will not be home till 12. <laughs> in, case his, in case his wife is listening. In case you're listening a week later. <laughs> all right. How, how's, how's everything going? guys did you have a good week no i'm ticked off right now ticked off I'm happy why tell us my, my my sign out front got tagged your trump sign no my business sign oh really yeah what they what they put on it blm oh, oh that makes ooh. it better <laughs> and and the F word and 21, which is 1A1. Not, it has something to do with the drug task force or something, I think. 21. <laughs> okay. So you noticed it overnight and then you went and cleaned it up with the acetone and it was completely fine within an hour. No, it's not. No. Because it's a vinyl. I, it's vinyl. And, and oh. I started cleaning it off and it started taking the vinyl ink off. Yeah. So I'm yeah. pissed. So you didn't put the clear coat over the vinyl. You, I did you, not. You skipped that step that would have bought you another five years of perfect yeah. vinyl. Yep. I'm having the whole sign redone by a old school sign guy that does all my striping. He's a pinstriper, and yeah. he's going to paint it. And he's going to do it old school, and I'm, I'm actually kind of excited about it now. So stay tuned to see what that looks like. And heavy yeah. duty clear coat so that you can, yes. you know, wipe exactly. off spray paint. Exactly. Well, and, uh, you know, that just goes to show you to make sure you support your BLM, your local BLM uh, <laughs> chamber of commerce. That way <laughs> your, your business doesn't get hit. I, I don't believe they asked me. <laughs> because they I, I think they I would not send yeah. a representative by. Huh. I'd have yeah. thought in California, you guys would have at least, you know, probably got mail in, you know. <laughs> Well, I had a freaking great week. It's been a it's been a great week. It got even better yesterday because I got some little presents from Mr. Vince and the fine folks from Anson. So my week was kicking ass. Oh, I thought we couldn't, couldn't talk about that. That's top secret. Well, you could talk no. about because by the time this airs, it, it'll be time to talk about it. Oh, good. Yeah. Immediately. I don't really care. I don't really care. I'm going to talk about it all <laughs> because it just means more work for Vince, and that's, that makes me happy. Yeah. Now, by, ne by the time this airs, the Sturgis Motorcycle Rally will be five days in. It starts. We're, we're recording this on a Thursday. It starts tomorrow morning. People out here don't care about your COVID problem, city people. Yeah. This place is freaking nuts already. I'm actually praying I get tomorrow off so that I do not have to drive in what would be considered Dallas traffic here in western South Dakota. Now, uh, uh, do you go visit? I don't know if I'm going to. I'm, that's so many people. It really is. You know what? I'd, I'd be interested in seeing a little video from you if you going down and seeing – Nobody wearing masks and all that. That would bring joy to my life. I, I posted a shot of that downtown Rapid City on a random night. Uh, some friends called us. They're like, hey, let's, let's go downtown to the arcade. So we went down there, and there was like five people with masks, and the place was packed everywhere we went. That was it. Good. Yeah. And, well, <laughs> are you bragging about that stuff? I'm just wondering. You know, do you guys really want to drag this out longer? I mean, Sturgis, <laughs> you got people coming from all over the world. 
Yeah, it, it, it's going to be interesting. More people are panicking that don't live here than right. are who live here. You know, probably because most of us who live here social distance the rally anyway. <laughs> exactly. Well, like my take on it is we're coming close to the school year and I want my kid friggin' out of the friggin' house. I want him in school. <laughs> yeah, me too. He's been out of the school since friggin' March for crying out loud. Get yeah, him out yeah. there, get him in school. And the only way they're going to do that is if the numbers are down. So that's my motivation. Wear a friggin' mask. No, the Democrats are going to prolong it as long as they can. Oh, come on. Let's not get political on our nice podcast. We don't want to go there. That's right. That's will, right. I will, Besides I will, that, we're poking we're stuff with. If we're poking stuff with sticks, let's keep it as cars. Right. Um, okay, so I got to tell you a funny story before we get into those tools that you got. <laughs> I was in East Texas this weekend, right? And uh, we we're out uh, shopping at this big thing that goes on once a month. Uh, first Monday, it's called. So we're looking for some pieces for our new house. And, and I've learned really quick now, if someone says, where are you from, boy? My answer is Burleson, Texas, not California when you're in Texas. <laughs> East Texas or West Texas. So when you get out of these uh, bigger cities of Texas, you don't want to say you're from California because I've been called a sleeper cell. I've been called <laughs> stuff to the point where my wife is like, uh, we got to go now. <laughs> because me right? with my mom, of course, I sit there and, you know, banter with these guys and I'm having a good time. Those guys, they're not so much having a good time. Me saying, you know, the things that I'm saying, I, 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 and never am I even expressing my political view, views to these guys. They just... They're, they're, they're California, we're the devil, and uh, we're sleep ourselves. We're coming to infiltrate Texas, the great state of Texas, and uh, switch over, went over to the Democratic Party. <laughs> sleep ourselves. That's great. Were you, what were you handing out flyers? I mean, what the heck? <laughs> I was eating Italian ice, sitting there with my wife eating Italian ice. Where are you from, boy? <laughs> Sicily, that's why we're having Italian ice. I heard they infiltrated Texas. <laughs> oh, that's good stuff. Yeah, so I just got to be, I had to throw that out there on the political side of it. But uh, <laughs> no one knows my political agenda except for me. I do. No, you don't. Yeah, you're, you're, you're a sleeper cell. <laughs> <laughs> Sleep yeah, I don't, I don't hide mine uh, at all. I loathe all forms of government. I think it sucks. <laughs> that's that's as far as I'm going. I, so, okay, my my son actually, I came home two days ago, and he goes, Dad, I, I registered to vote. And I go, You did? He goes, Yeah. He he turned 18, and he did it all by himself. And I go, What'd you register as? Republican. I was like, Really? Did it, did it all on his own. <laughs> right. boy. So right. anyway, so, move on. let's talk about poking fun stuff with sticks. Daniel, you posted a photo on the internet, created all sorts of havoc and hell with poor Mr. Uh, Vince's life here. So why don't you highlight yeah. about that? Yeah, the the double shots, the, the tequila double shots. So Vince is trying to tell me that, that I wasn't supposed to post it which made me, brought me even more joy. So, <laughs> uh, Are you using them? Yeah, actually, I used it yesterday and today uh, right away. I mean, love the handle because um, I haven't had that, that new handle yet. I haven't had that. Why that not? Gorilla grip. How, come you, how come you haven't bought that Gorilla Grip, Daniel? Now that you're giving me shit, I'm going to give you shit. <laughs> how come you haven't bought the Gorilla Grip in the past? You know, I am well, because I didn't really have a lot of tools to put it on. That's why I have, oh, a, I have a lot of ultra, I have, I have a lot of ultra stuff. So I have the ultra handle and stuff. So, but, um, but now that you're sending me boatloads of, uh, all kinds of tools. Yeah. I'm using it, but I, I used that tool yesterday and it was fantastic. Um, it's, um, super strong, uh, great handle, great. Um, what I like about the, I like the T handle a lot because you can make it a right or left mm -hmm. and, and a T handle. I, 
I don't even know why you would have the other handle. To be honest with you. Okay. Well, I'll tell you why. Okay. Because um, while the T handle is great, that singular handle, once you move that sucker out there at about 10 inches long, you pretty much will shove it through the outer metal of any vehicle you're pushing on. Yeah, but you can do that with the T handle if you have the extension. Yeah, but the other, you, you get the T handle in the wrong spot, the back side of the T handle hits stuff. Oh, okay. Gotcha. Okay. And here's another thing, too, because you're going to be using, there's, going to be all sorts of new tools coming out and old tools that are going to be indexed for these handles. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Anson in the next month, hopefully by September, we're going to have the hubs and they're not going to be, you know, cheap China. Don't trust China. China is asshole. They're going to be American made hubs that will fit that gorilla grip. Okay. So, if you notice, like on the A1s, there's a little bit of slop in it. The ones that we have coming out, they're tight. They're okay. tight. And well, the ones you sent me today the, 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 with, the, with the new handle, sorry, um, it was a lot tighter. Yeah, yeah. So, and, all right, uh, let's, you, yeah. let's discuss you, a little bit on the double shots. So, the yeah. double shots are going to be available in 18-inch, 24-inch. 30 inch, 36 inch, 42 inch, and 48 inch. Yes. Now you could buy them individually, or you, um, we're uh, Anson. I finally convinced now uh, anyone that has bought from Anson for years knows that they do not discount their tools, mainly because they can't discount tools because they're selling everyone else's tools and they just can't discount someone else's tools, period. So stop asking. Okay. <laughs> but. The tools that they personally come out with, like these tequilas, they're going to offer them in sets that are going to be really reasonably priced and to the point where you're kind of getting the handle for free. I sense. know. I he, he was telling, Craig was telling me the prices of those double shots and, with, and, and then he throws in the last minute, the handle's included. I'm like, what? Yeah. Handle's yeah. included. That handle's normally like, isn't it like 200 bucks or something like that yeah i think it's like 225 bucks yeah yep yeah. yep that's what i paid for my yeah so i'm like wow okay that's that's coming out strong yeah so and that's what we're doing like on the double shots four you could buy in a set or you could buy the, the what are the last two big ones john 48 42 and 48 those 42 and 48 so a lot of hail guys are wanting that they requested those lengths so we made them separate. Uh, so we're going to have three different sets. You're going to be able to get the first four. And then you'll be able to get, for hail guys, if you don't want the, the smaller sizes, you could just get by the two larger ones and it'll come with a handle. Or like I had Tom Hickey today, we're actually calling it Hickey set. And that's the whole set, the whole kick and caboodle with two handles. You'll get the T handle and the regular handle. Nine hundred and twenty-five dollars. So, and it's a savings of a lot of money. And off of that, you could build everything off of that at that point. So you're yeah. throwing out, out your A one handles. Uh, you're able to uh, next month you'll be able to buy the hubs. So if you have Ultra Tools or uh, uh, Standminer tool. Tools or whatever, any tool, yeah, any tool you can have that so, hand welded on, right? Welded on, yeah. Take it to your okay. local well then on. All right, Vince, finish describing the the double shots a little bit. So all right, we described the lengths. Now they're diameters. Oh, come on, don't do this to me. <laughs> all right, I got all the specs in front of me. Okay, they range I from can't pull them up. I wasn't pr pr proper for that. They part. range from three eighths uh round to nine sixteenths. The bottom what is it, two thirds is shaved. Yeah, all the way up, almost to the top of the handle. Yeah. It's shaved. So they're going to really fit down. They fit down in some tight areas. Uh, we're cramming them into some heavy door dent work today on some uh, heavy side damage. And I had just great and awesome leverage because we're doing this big beaten junk, basically. And. Yeah. Uh, we're able to get get in there a lot with those double shots. Now I did uh, push the forty eight inch out to its max on a Chevy Dually bedside, and I 
did flex it side to side. Now, not no. front to back because I, oh. I don't know what it's going to do. You're going to poke that tip through something to try, before you do that. But, well, and what I found is for the guys that have the Zer Zerkus set or was thinking about the Zerkus set, these are sharper than the Zerkus set. They push sharper than it for yeah, some they're. reason. So, uh, but man, I, I tell you, Jesse dug out, dug out just a nasty sharp Doherty on a uh, Cadillac Escalade uh -huh. with the uh, I think it was the thirty inch one. Yeah, and I was pretty impressed. I didn't think we'd get the bottom out of that thing at all. It had a hell of a scar in the paint that required touch up, uh, and it. Well, and you clean them up. The funny thing about these is what I'm finding is, you know, I'm using the door lords from like the brace up, right? And then me personally, I like as a door dinger, I like the 18 and the 30 inch for below the brace. So that you got that section. And once you get past the middle door brace, you're able to go down and it has the right curve of a double bend to be able to get over there and drive and still leverage off of the window which I really like. Uh, yeah. those, those numbers that you were saying was uh, 38 is the smallest diameter. Uh, it goes 38, three 7 eighths, sixteenths. Yeah. I'm sorry, three, <laughs> three eighths. 7 sixteenths, 7 sixteenths, uh, half inch. And then it starts set, stepping up. Once you get into the big boys, those are I don't even know. That's five eighths and nine sixteenths, I believe. Yeah, you know that. That's funny that you mentioned that, Vince, because that's the door tool I was using yesterday, and I was working on a really sharp little ding. I mean, it, it was like a BB hit it, uh, right. and I have my normal window tool, which is a curved kind of a, a tool, but. That double bend, it, it seemed to hit the center better than a curved tool. And and because it was so sharp, it was like absolutely perfect. Yeah. Uh, and, it works, and, and and then you got the handle on top of it, and you got tons of leverage, all the leverage you want in the world. It was yeah. Fantastic. Yeah. There's, there's a lot of cool things happening over at Anson, and, and it's not just because I'm working over there. It's, it's, you're hearing it more because I'm working. Yes, it there. is. It's all because you're working there. <laughs> no, I mean, Craig, yes, come on. It's all you Vince. You, your so awesomeness awesome. is just oozing out. <laughs> oozing. You hear about it more because of me. <laughs> so, uh, Craig, oh. I mean, Craig, Craig is working on stuff for years that are just starting to pop right now. And it's, it's just really cool. So yeah, it's good. I know he he's I've I've got I've got one tool that nobody else has and I'm I can't wait to start talking about it and, and I'm like <laughs> dude it's it's good it's it's perfect if I can start producing it and put it out there yeah I've got a few too and I have prototypes that uh you know COVID has put it uh, yeah that's out for you know there's a lot of guys waiting for my flat bars that are coming out uh, I have a whole line of tools that will be coming out with Anson as well, and uh, those are really cool. And but you know, COVID yeah, but those is, are going to suck, huh? Yeah. Those are going to suck. Yeah, well, the old demos are guys will appreciate. It. Yeah, yeah, maybe, maybe if there's, well, are there any of those guys left around anymore? Five or six. <laughs> They're all retired. Yeah. <laughs> all right. So all what right. else will be going on? Well, uh, the next thing that I've been, I've been testing out three sets of tools from Anson here. So we just discussed the double shots. The next are up what going to be called the rattlesnake tails. Yes. And they are a curved set of whale tails, basically. How would you describe them, Vince? Yeah, a bent whale tail set. So they're already an arched whale tail. Yeah. And uh, I've got the inch and a quarter and the three quarter inch. Now, were you on? You weren't on the other day when we actually showed these, and, and uh, they're in the show notes from like two weeks ago. I think you nope. missed that episode. Yeah, I was. I was probably gone then. Now, yeah, they were giving me a hard time, Hudson and, and Dan. And you're like, what's the purpose of them being bent and this and that? And I'm like, guys, I didn't. 
give me a hard time, but you're going to love them when you get them. <laughs> so they're designed for basically hoods and trunks and that upper, uh, the windshield and back window brace on your roofs. And what we found in them today was I got them in, we had them in the shop. Jesse and I went to town on a Chevy pickup with a sunroof. And where we'd normally put the whale tail and you grind your hand, the back of your hand, into that sunroof surround, the rattlesnake tails moved your hand beneath that sunroof surround. Yeah. And are these with the same index in the, in the tactical handle? No, 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 no. These are of a, a normal welded-on whale tail handle. Um, uh, they will eventually be indexed for – we're talking about it. It, it would everything, be interesting. I think to see. everything should be like that. Well, yeah, but I don't know. They're yeah, well I, I, yeah, maybe yeah. not. Yeah, I don't yeah. know. Now, what we did find is they do have that uh, whale tail into, I think it's like an 18 incher. Yeah. And um, there, by the time the curve, the backbone of the tool is hitting too much. So we haven't found the spot that that's going to work yet. But I'm guessing I haven't got a chance to do any hoods or decks. Yeah. Because um, we were just doing this roof. But we were slaying between them and the new tequila hand tools, which everybody knows the tequila hand tools are similar to the Excaliburs. Mm -hmm. And everybody goes back and forth between which is better, the tequilas or the Excaliburs. Yeah. Now the tequilas have this indexed hub on them. Yes. Blows everything out of the water. I don't care what you're using. <laughs> because... Yeah, we were using the Excaliburs, the regular tequilas, and the tequila with the indexing hand grip with the Gorilla Grip. Yeah. The fact that you could put that handle in any direction, have this six-inch long handle, and grab the bottom of it, you your hand was always clear of the roof, the other bracing, the window openings, and you not did not get any kickback on your wrist. Nice. And, and that's the whole purpose of it is to get your hands away from that panel that, that has sharp edges or, or that brace that's going to cut the crap out of you. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, whether it's the indexed uh, tequila tools that, that now have the hub on them. And you got to keep in mind, too, if you have the tequila tools, the hand tools now, you'll be able to buy these hubs in about a month from now. Some of you have gone out and, and research, research where they are and got them. Uh, but we're going to have American-made ones that are going to fit really tight into that Gorilla Grip. And yeah. I'm telling you, this is, this is going to – it's not going to revolutionize because there's tons of techs, techs out there that won't know about it. But the guys that do know about it, they're, they're, they're going to they're gonna love it. They're going to absolutely love having just two handles on their cart and then all their tools laid out. Now, what – we need to come up with is somehow to identify. <laughs> yes. Right. Yeah, right. That uh, killed uh, me. Cause I got this and I've got the full set of hand tools. So yeah. I have got it's 16 hand tools. I have 16 black heads sitting there. <laughs> staring at you. Which one's <laughs> To the cart. And you don't know what is what we, we took markers and color coded the tops. That's what I was going to tell you. Get some auto writers or something. Just color code the tops until we come out with a better system. Yep. Now, as a hail guy, where it fell short, only the two handles. Because like a lot of times when I'm doing a hood, I might have four or five uh, different tools. And you got to take the time to swap that handle around. Yeah, but it's seconds. Yeah. Or you could go and buy some more handles. That's Probably what John's going to do is spend a buttload more money on Gorilla Grips. Uh, but they they are worth it and the leverage. And those of you who are Excalibur fans, uh, by no means am I uh, crapping all over the Excalibur tools. Those are phenomenal tools. Uh, sure. You're going to want to put this indexing head on those tools because you will get the rest of the power out of those tools. Actually, that's a, that's actually a really neat idea. You know, you could actually get by the hubs next month and put them on, on any tool, Excalibur or Standliner or Ultra or whatever. So, and then that lets you organize your tools better because they can, you know, if you've got 
some kind of uh, drawers or boxes or whatever, you can organize things better. Yeah. You know, and uh, John, do you have a, a large TDN cart or small? Yeah, I have the large TDN cart. Okay. Uh, you Did you get a tray? Did you get the new tray that uh, for, from Anson, the, the XL? Nope. Tool? I did. Oh, Daniel did. Okay. Well, Daniel, could you could hang that on the wall, you know, because you don't have a, a TDN cart. No, but uh, I, I hung it on my homemade cart that I made. Um, no, no. Well, show, show the world what that looks like. Take some pictures of it. I will. Because everyone's showing them on, on a TDN cart. And, and then the short one I put on my um, my cart that I got from Harbor Freight. It has all my accessories in. Yeah. My accessory cart. Yeah. Um, and I put that one on that one. I challenge you to a video, Daniel. I want okay. you to do a video showcasing your work. I actually tool. just mounted them today, so I haven't had a ch chance to post them yet. Okay. You know, you know what I want is I want a tray that will fit your magnetet map. Yeah, we're working on a different type of map because my map is flat. It's a map. It's not a tray. So no, you I know, know the, but I want the tray. I want the aluminum tray to be the same size as your map. Cut, that's cut the map. huge. That's that yeah, twenty one by seventeen. Isn't that? It's a big yeah, map. It, or, it, it, okay, I want. Isn't I want that the I, new Wiley cart. Yeah, there really? you go. I, I want a new. Uh, tequila cart with a magnetet mat as the the center. <laughs> we have we do have a cart that's coming down the pipe, but that's way down the pipe. But it's gonna be cool because you know how like you go to uh, you go to Disneyland and you're able to build your own cart car or, or yeah build a bear or yeah. American uh, Girl. Yeah. Build, yeah. yeah, we got a cart that you guys are gonna love, and I'm hoping hoping. It will be done by the time of MTE, if we have an MTE come January. But I mean, it's going to be it's going to be a trick. There's going to be many different levels and facets to it. That'd be cool. Yeah, yeah. Right. We can have a little nice. factory line. You know, uh, what? All right. Factory line where you build your cart. Yeah, you that would be cool. I'll take this. I'll take that, and start building carts. <laughs> we could have content. What five thousand dollars for a cart? <laughs> All right, take that <laughs> off and take that off. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Yeah. Well, Vince. actually, you know what? I, okay, I'm going to put in a request right now. I what? want an accessory to hold my cup, eliminate uh, light. Uh, you know what? The, the, the XL would probably hold it a limited line on the side where well, you put your slide hammer. Someone, someone showed, someone made one out of wood on their van and where the light, the light itself slid into this slot. It was almost like a bread slot or something. And hmm. I thought that was kind of a good idea. Oh, I'd never seen it. Post some pictures, Daniel. Yeah. That was yeah, a long yeah, time ago. I don't even know who posted that. that one. Go find it. Yeah. Damn it. Yeah. So, All right, let's move on. What were you okay. going to ask? All right, Vince. Yes. You and I found out something extremely interesting and highly important involving Altel scanners this last oh. week. Yes, by default. <laughs> by default. So why don't you go ahead and, and fill everybody in on that? Uh, I think it would be better if you did because actually I didn't bring home the paperwork to talk about it. But okay. Let me see if I can do it. Okay. So 2018 and up on anything made by Fiat, Fiat. or Dodge or Jeep or Ram. Chrysler. Chrysler. I'm sorry. There is no Dodge, right? Dodge is different. Yeah. Dodge is still there. They've got their cars. They're just not the pickups anymore. But right. the it's Ram. Challenger... Yep, Ram. Yeah. So uh, they have this security issue going on. So if you have a scanner, and it's not just, it doesn't matter what scanner you have. Exactly. It doesn't matter if it's Snap-on, Autel, Costco, <laughs> whatever. You cannot, they have a security system on there where you cannot just plug in your scanner into OBD2 port and start scanning like normal and reading codes and and uh, you could read codes read codes you could read them but you can't go and erase them right yep yep <clears throat> so 
Go ahead. So how we found this was uh, we had a 2019 Ram 2500 Cummins diesel. We scanned it. We got these strange strange pop-ups, but we're like, okay. On uh, And we did this on my Altel 906 BT. We uh, said, okay. We went ahead and scanned it. There was no pre-existing codes, which there shouldn't have been. This thing had 5,000 miles on it. Right. We removed the headliner. We unplugged the antenna, the overhead console, and the right taillight are the three items that were unplugged from this truck. We did the hail damage on it, rescanned it. We blew three codes, one for plugging, unplugging the antenna, one for unplugging the overhead console, and one for unplugging the uh, right taillight. You mean you didn't just Went unplug clear the three minutes and uh, clear the codes? <laughs> no. You didn't put the ground and the positive together to clear the codes? <laughs> hell, actually, hell no. Hell no. That would have done either that. If you guys don't know, that's a stupid, stupid global reset. And when I mean global reset, that means it clears every single thing on your customer's car. Is that like crossing the streams? Yes. <laughs> yes. Okay. Got yes. It. Do not cross. So, anyhow, we needed to clear three codes. We couldn't do it. Altel said that we couldn't do it. It wouldn't happen. We started looking it up. We needed an Altel cable. Uh, what was it? A 16 plus 8 or something like that? Yeah. And our research on it, we had to pull the center of the dash, pull the radio, pull the HVAC controls, plug the cable in there along with the OBD2 connector, and then we could clear the codes on this stupid Ram truck. So I called Vince right away to get this cable ordered. Because and what did you find, Vince? Oh, he, he locked up. He froze. <laughs> okay, I'm taking a picture of this. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, while we're waiting for Vince, we'll see if he, he can pop back here quickly. Um, so, <clears throat> so after you clear, if you know oh. anything, well, uh, to order this cable, you have to order it from an Altel representative which would be Anson, which is why I called Vince immediately up and had him look into it. What he found out was that you had to, um, if you have the 906 scanner, um, you can actually use a third-party software uh, to get into it, and that third-party software is from autoauth.com, like auto authorization only it's auto auth.com and we're going to put up a link in the show notes and you have to sign up for this third party software it's a $50 yearly subscription you pay that you have to set your username your password then when you connect your Altel scanner, whether it's the 906 or bigger, this um, I'll cover the 808 here in a minute. You have to log in on that. You have to do the auxiliary um, outside service, whatever in the hell it was called. You'll see the prompt on your screen. You'll enter your auto auth username and password which you can set in the altel to remember you thank god and then it allows you to access and clear the codes that you put in and correct those codes but it is a 50 dollars yearly subscription and this is required if you have altel matco snap on any third party scanner system gotcha uh, 50 bucks and you're good to go 50 bucks and you're good to go. That's better than the 150 to $200 to have the dealer clear the code, which is what we thought we were going to have to do on this Ram. And we'd actually called the dealer. They were going to squeeze us in later that afternoon. Luckily, it did take me 45 minutes to get this all set up. So you're going to want to do it ahead of schedule 
before you get these 18 and up anything made by fiat so gotcha very it, it was a very interesting very stressful uh time in our shop because our alltel scanner said it couldn't couldn't connect to anything yet everything worked and it was very confusing mm. so okay good, now good. daniel you haven't run into anything like that yet have you no, I have zero problems because I don't own a scanner yet. <laughs> oh, man. All right. I'm and for, loose and free. <laughs> Naked as a <laughs> All right. And we lost Vince, so not only did he uh, – um, somebody must have cut his cable there, got mad about being in a dry county and, and shut off everybody's internet access. Yeah. So. Uh, I guess the only other thing, uh, Daniel, you and I pre-gamed this whole show on Tuesday night because Vince and Hudson didn't show up. Right. So we were discussing a few things. And what what's the last thing that we were uh, going over? Oh, uh, put me on the spot. Uh, <laughs> what were we talking about? <laughs> well, Power PDRs. Oh, Power PDR, yes. Um, and you were experimenting a lot lately and playing around with, uh, multiple versions, right? Yes. And, and then playing around with homemade stuff <laughs> to get under braces, <laughs> which, uh, um, uh, <clears throat> the final result of this is I let the magic smoke out of the hood on a Chevy pickup. When it was yeah. all said and done. Um, so, yeah, I did burn the paint off. But we did learn a lot of difference. And uh, it was basically Daniel, Vince, Hudson, and I kind of going back and forth on our, our private messenger stuff, uh, discussing this before Dwayne Emerson got involved from Power PDR. Yeah. So, and you're, you're, you're asking, um, you know, we need to find somebody that's got that new box from black plague and, and maybe see if they've compared it with, um, the power PDR box. Um, the one difference that their box has, it has a trigger and you think that might have an advantage. I, I think it's entirely possible, especially doing under brace because, the power PDR boxes, whether you've got the first, second, or third generation, that electrode is live all the time. Yeah. And so if one of you listeners out there uh, has the new box from uh, up in, out of Canada there from Cam Auto, and that's sold through Black Plague, uh, if you have that um, and are willing to come on the show, please let yourself be known. We'd like to have you on and pick your brain about that. Yeah. Yeah. It'd be interesting to see how it does compare if they've, if they've had it. Uh, oh, Vince is back. Hello, Vince. Hi guys. <laughs> did your, did your son uh, overdo it with the YouTube? Uh, he's on YouTube, but he, I mean, he's hardlined into it. I have no idea why that happened, but I'm restarting my computer right now. Oh, so. okay. Yeah. Nice. Cool. Okay. Well, we're moving on kind of talking about the power PDR box. We discussed the Altel and, and how that finalized. Oh, and I didn't get that 808. So if you have the 808, you have to buy the additional cabling. Yes, you do. Yeah. So moral to the story is to go ahead and spend the extra money and get the 906 BT or, or anything bigger than the 906 would be fine. You won't need the cable. You pay the 50 bucks yearly. And really, the, the, you know what the cool part about this is that you guys are, are kind of not looking at? I don't know if you mentioned it while I was gone, but Autel is the only company that has been able to successfully hook up with the third party to make it happen. Oh, now that I didn't know. Yes. So that is like a feather in the cap of Autel. So if you have an Autel, that's great because the guys that own uh, <laughs> uh, Snap-ons and stuff like that, they're not doing that. They're, they're paying a huge subscription 
or they could pay for that $50 subscription, but it's not tied into their tablet. They're having to do it different ways. Oh, wow. So either that or they have to buy a cable as well. So, gotcha. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Okay. All right. So we were talking about what we kind of learned on the power of PDRs uh, a little bit. <clears throat> so for the major differences between the version one to version three, I got to pick Dwayne's brain a little bit about this after I let the magic smoke out of the paint job on the hood of this truck. Right. Uh, <clears throat> version one is much, much larger, much heavier. We all know that the version three is slimmer, sexier. Um, in order to do that, they made the transformer smaller than in the version one. And in the process of doing that, the reason the version three is a bit faster when you are using the carbon arc cutting rods, that's that big uh, rod that comes with it that makes the contact with your panel. Uh, they tightened up the wavelength, the frequency uh, that it in, puts into the metal to help shrink that up and tighten that up. They tightened that frequency and that wavelength up. So yeah, <laughs> we got a nodder. That <laughs> Daniel's back to not off on us. <laughs> well, well, we're nerding out. We're nerding out, and I don't blame him for that. Yeah. But so they tightened that up. So when you're using those carbon arc rods, it the version three is a bit faster than version one. Where it goes south on you <laughs> is let's say. For instance, you had a broken whale tail and you crammed it in place of the carbon heart cutting rod. <laughs> <laughs> Which is and not your board recommended procedure. And it's not recommended, right? <laughs> <laughs> then shoved it between two pieces of metal. And then that, that tighter frequency and that smaller wavelength going through the denser material does not transfer as well. Oh, so, amazing. Yeah. So then when you think it is not working or that you may have damaged your version 3 uh, power PDR box by having it at 100% and 12 volts of power... <laughs> Then you turn around and load said steel into a version one machine with a much larger transformer, which puts power through a denser material at a much higher rate. Cram said electrode into there. The magic smoke leaves the paint job on your hood <laughs> in a little less than a millisecond. Oh, that quickly, huh? Oh, that, I was I was more impressed with you being able to sand the paint underneath the brace. You know that right there is a, a feat in itself. I don't it know was. How to, yeah, um, and that uh, honestly, there is zero good under brace stuff. And Dwayne and I spent about an hour on the phone um, discussing everything. And the reason why nothing is being released by, uh, power PDR for under braces is there's nothing you could do in there. You, you know, you do it, you're doing it at your own risk with homemade stuff. That's it. Yeah. That's and that, that they're, they're not backing anything from what I understand. And for our listeners that don't know, Dwayne Emerson, he, uh, he's out of Colorado, Florida, and, uh, the Ukraine. So East, Eastern European block, somewhere over there. Uh, he's a very nice guy, well-educated in our industry, has been around for probably 30 years, and he's brought a lot of other tools to the industry as well, including some tabs in the past and whatnot. But he is the distributor, the North American distributor for uh, the Power of PDR box, and has been since day one. And, uh, you know, it's one of those things that it's a great machine. And I'm not sure, you know, the, the COVID has really screwed up everything because there's supposed to be thousands of these things here in this country. And people are pounding on the doors to every company that carries them. Hey, where are, where are they? We want to buy them because it is a great machine. I actually had to, I, at Anson last week, I took a, a broken one. And the reason why it was broken was the LED screen had popped off, right? So it was in the box, just dangling someone, someone in there so they didn't sell it and i'm like i'm taking the sucker apart and i'm gonna figure out what the hell's wrong with this thing 
So I took it apart and found out it was just an LED screen, popped it back in, and was able to sell it to a customer today. And I didn't sell it to a PDR technician. I sold it to a body shop. So the body shops are catching on with this as well. They're saving panels. Today, I had body shop uh, technicians coming in. I had body men come in today buying Kiko tabs, super tabs, asking me what tabs to buy, what glue to buy, and stuff like that. They were using... Uh, cam auto glue but they want to try other glues they wanted to try different stuff so it's really interesting seeing the growth of our industry and what we have accomplished is starting to spread over to other industries as well and it's not really other industries obviously the body shop industry is what we're born from but uh it's there's well, good stuff coming guys you know what's interesting about that is the body shop guys the new guys coming in to the body shop world haven't learned the old school techniques from old body guys no, and no. all they know is replacing panels so they they didn't learn any any of these old school techniques and we are starting to cross the line over into the body shop realm and we're taking those old techniques and we're putting them in our repertoire and we're starting yeah. to use them you know yeah. and and we're we're crossing lines and it's it's interesting and now we're teaching pdr guys are teaching body guys how to do old school techniques it's funny yeah and how, how to straighten that metal and what i'm finding from the body techs that um i'm showing what glues to buy what tabs to buy that sort of stuff uh they are tired of grinding everything before fixing it because they can't they're not getting them as straight you know, we're coming in and we're tricking out panels and making yeah. them flat. Daniel, you talk about it all the time. You go in there and you straighten stuff out all the time. Yeah. And body guys are blown away by it, you know. And so they're learning to use their eyes more than grinding out and making a mess of everything. Yep. Yeah. yeah. So... The, the, and it's it's really cool because, I mean, more power to them. I mean, at the end of the day, we're all just trying to make money and, and get through the day and do our job well and give the car back to the customer and all that good stuff. And there's no reason to have any animosity towards body guys. You know, yeah. a lot of us started, you know, John yourself, you started as body guy. And, yep. Personally, so, I, I don't think body guys really, it's almost like they're, they don't have the patience to, to really learn everything that we know. Nor do they want to. No, they you don't. Know. I really don't. We've, they have the desire there. Yeah, we've got one body shop that is uh, feeding us cars. Their in-house PDR guy is one of their body techs. He can't do what we're doing. No. It, it, it just can't. And most of them that I show which glues and tabs to buy have no desire to try to PDR or something. They just don't want to have to grind it off and fill it full of mud every time. If they can get it close enough to block or DA and prime or yeah. even use uh, a little bit of final glaze. Yeah, yeah. You're, John, you're, the only, you're the only guy that I know that came from the body shop world and has been so successful in the PDR industry. Oh, I don't think I know any. Oh, uh, I know there, lots. There, there are lots. Yeah, there's lots of guys. Yeah, they're, they're just not as you know vocal as, as, or present as yeah. John is in our lives. Well, I know some guys from <laughs> Europe are. Um, there's definitely some guys from Australia and England and and uh, European countries. Um, I just don't know a lot of American guys. To be honest with you. Yeah. Especially a lot of like uh, Gary Housing, you know, um, I believe I said his last name correctly. Uh, a lot of old timers, but uh, for me, it's the love of the metal, man. And, you know, when I'm talking to a body guy and I had a body guy, you know, standing over my shoulder, uh, somebody that I was teaching all the glue stuff. He's like, oh, I'm going to watch you learn all your secrets. And I just, I was 100% honest with him. I'm like, you could spend, you could spend all day watching me and you'll still never do what I'm going to do. Yeah. And the truth of the matter is, is because he won't spend the first four hours to fix a quarter size dent. Yeah. 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 All the rest of us did that. Yeah. Now I got to hand it to like Gene Fetty, you know, Kiko, 
they're doing a wonderful job educating the body shop industry. You know, Gene, I don't know if he's still doing it, but it's almost at, yes. like every Friday, right? I Honestly, I'm trying to get him out here to some body shops here. Yeah, because, I mean, he's just phenomenal. He's a phenomenal PDR tech. He's a great talker. He's a great communicator and, and steward of our industry. I mean, he's... There's sometimes when I'm watching the video and he, he shares it over on P, PDR Tool Time, there's like 3,000 guys watching that, you know? And they're not PDR guys watching it. There are PDR guys watching it, but the majority of those guys are body guys throughout the world watching him use the Kiko uh, tabs and stuff like that. Yeah. And it, more power to him. I, I love Gene. He's a great guy. He's a great ambassador for this industry. I love him. And if you have questions on glue polling, that is the one person to reach out to. Yeah. yeah. You know, him and, and Craig from Answer, <laughs> honestly. Uh, but Gene. Craig, every answer about glue that you would ever have. <laughs> no, he will bore you to death talking about glue. Yes, he would. Yes. <laughs> But he's he's researched it and and but Gene has a way of teaching people how to do it that's just unbelievable. So if you guys have a collision center who have techs that are wanting to know more, yeah, put them in touch with Kiko and let them do that Kiko course. It's an eight hour course on site, um, money it's well spent. Cheap. I mean, body guys, body shops, they spend thousands and thousands of dollars for education and tools that. Us PDR guys, they laugh at us. Oh my God, you're you're com It's like, oh, you're charging me one hundred fifty dollars for a rod. Those guys are like, you freaking kidding me? We pay one hundred fifty dollars just to like for a tab, you know? But, uh, look you know, at what but they, they spent. Look what those shops spent on aluminum. Oh yeah, twenty yeah. plus thousand bucks for a machine that sits in the corner and won't do squat. And okay. my little hillbilly ass shows up with some craft glue and some fancy Christmas tree ornaments and does five times as much work. And save the panel. <laughs> and save the panel. That's what's killing these guys, and that's what Kiko teaches them how to do. Yeah, so that's very cool. So do we have any other topics going on? Because, I, I mean, we're kind of running out of time here. No, we are running out of time. Let's save that for later. Yeah, there's. Uh, I've I got another technician that we're going to have on the air that's also new, in less than a year. Uh, I, he reached out to us and wants to talk about his uh, experience, strength, and struggles throughout the past year. Awesome. So we're going to get him on. Uh, we'll you know chat him up for a little bit and see what's going on with him and see if we could help him along. And you know I want to thank Chris Dale for coming on last week. That was great, Daniel. Yes. You weren't on, but that was a really heartfelt episode you should go back and listen to it daniel you might know something <laughs> no, uh but i mean yeah we want to thank all you guys for listening and you know all, all you beautiful technicians whether you're a guy or a girl i love the fact that there's lots of girls coming up in this industry now huh Sweet. women so, sexist yeah it's it's getting uh more and more uh and it's awesome i'm they're finally uh friended me more and more on facebook and the the numbers are getting large and i think it's i think it's awesome yeah i love it i, I think we need more of that my boss is a woman very strong powerful woman that has learned how to do pdr so she can know how to talk to pdr technicians in in, in the shop it's just i actually sit back sometimes and like i just watch her <laughs> This tour because before, like a year ago or two years ago, when I was here, you know, Daniel and I, we would be sitting there and remember, I'm like, hey, Christina, come over here and, and fix this dent. She said, I've never fixed a dent before in my life. Here's the power of <laughs> the box. Put it on that dent. And she's like, I realized my dad didn't even get me to do this. And she did it. And now, you know, a year later, she's gotten two trainings. She knows and understands tools. And it's actually really cool. You know, listening to her talk to uh, to technicians, men, and tell them well, exactly why she uses that tool. I had a little conversation with her, and she was giving me her opinion on you. How oh. she she was saying that how much you love tools, and she 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 was saying that Vince just loves talking about tools. <laughs> and I I 
I learned so much, but his passion is just so, so uh, invigorating. And uh, it was funny listening to her describe you talking about tools and talking to customers and hearing your passion. So it's, it's good to hear that yeah. they have somebody in there like yourself. Well, it's funny because it's actually got me in trouble since I've been there too. <laughs> Did you talking too much about tools? No, no. I, I had a kid come in with a problem with his illuminant light, and I'd start taking it apart right there. <laughs> you put it on my light. <laughs> I'm trying to get this warranty, and you're tearing it apart. <laughs> it's all right. <laughs> it's 20 years, man. I've been taking these things apart and putting them back together for years. You're kind of awesome. good at that, though, right? I love to tinker. Yeah. So you have to identify the problem, right? Before you warranty something. Yeah. There you go. He didn't appreciate it though. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Do do people come into Anson now and go, wow, you really sound familiar. Yeah. I had that today. He he thought I was Daniel Graham on the phone. (laughs) I I said I was Vince D'Alessandro. I knew that voice. (laughs) <laughs> it does it happens every day almost almost every day honestly it's kind of funny <laughs> yeah so i uh i yeah, want to see our listenership yeah. go way up now oh the we we have a good listenership and yeah, but i want to see it go up now that you're you're like on the home front yeah yeah taking it for the team man working for for the the best tool distributor in the world biggest it's amazing yeah. it's awesome all right, all right hey listen we gotta get to the end huh that brings us to the end yes the end and on a positive note yeah so daniel That's right. what the hell do you have to say to these listeners? you know uh well before we go i just want to say to all of our listeners we really appreciate you guys we love you guys reaching out to us and you know letting us know what you want to hear that's really important because we're always trying to come up with new ideas and trying to figure out stuff if you even want to come on the show reach out to one of us and um we'll put you on the show if you got something good to talk about we'll, we'll throw you on here um and um just want to thank everybody for listening and supporting us and hopefully we'll be able to do something here this year at mte i'm I'm hoping that everything yeah. will go good because I just heard that SEMA was canceled. Really? Yeah. Wow. Which is not good. Oh. Yeah. That's All right. disappointing. All right. No, let's pray. Let's pray for, for something good. So, and with that note, level up your tools, guys. Don't do stupid stuff. And suck it, hit your back. Make sure to hit that subscribe button so you can stay up to date with all the industry and tool related news every week. Mobile Tech RX, the app that helps you make more money. Don't forget to grab your Magnetech map, available at most PDR tool distributors.